Welcome back to Digital Currency Ownership before you begin. This is Lesson 5, our soft wallet primer. The purpose of this lesson is to introduce you to the wide variety of soft wallets that are currently in the market and to hopefully give you some criteria and methodology for selecting one that matches best your needs. Before we get started, let's start with some basic terminology. There are two types of wallets. There are heavy wallets and light wallets. Heavy wallets download the entire Bitcoin blockchain. Examples of that would be Armory or the Bitcoin Core. Light wallets, in contrast, they download only a summary of the blockchain or none at all. And there's quite a few light wallets. In fact, uh, all of the mobile wallets are light wallets, and a lot of the desktop wallets are too. Now, we specified these are Bitcoin wallets because Bitcoin, again, relies on this blockchain methodology. But uh, the vast majority of wallets, to be frank, are Bitcoin wallets. There are very few that are multi-currency wallets. So um, we're going to be looking primarily at Bitcoin wallets in this lesson, though we will touch upon a couple that do handle uh, common currencies like Litecoin or Darkcoin. The thing about heavy wallets is that the blockchain that it downloads is extremely large. It downloads the entire blockchain when you install it, and then it constantly updates it as new transactions are added to the blockchain. Of course, that's continually happening. Uh, for a lot of people, that original 22 gigabyte download is going to take a day or more the first time they set up this wallet. And then it's going to constantly update, constantly update. So it's going to take up computing power, bandwidth, and storage on your device. As you can see, from September 2013 to August 2014, the blockchain has more than doubled in size. And that's not going to stop. We're looking at a fairly steady pace of growth. 22 gigabyte again in August 2014. Now, this next chart is uh, a bit daunting, so we're going to weed it down really quickly, but let's get it up on the screen for starters. Okay, the column on the left shows us the name of 14 of the most commonly used digital wallets. In this case, Bitcoin wallets, but a couple, again, do handle more than one currency. The next columns tell us whether it's web-based, whether it's a desktop system, whether it's available in mobile, whether it supports other currencies, whether it supports offline transactions, the privacy rating for this wallet, and whether it's multilingual. Now, there's a lot of data here, and I'm just going to move on because you can come back or you can pause the uh, video here if you want to look at this in depth. Uh, we are going to narrow this down for you, so let's go ahead and take the next slide. For a lot of people, there's going to be a few things that qualify very quickly that range of wallets and limit that range. For example, do you require a wallet to handle more than just Bitcoin? If you do, there's only two choices on that list, CoinKite and Hive. Do you require a multilingual wallet? In that case, there's only three options, Bitcoin Core, Green Address, and Multibit. And Green Address currently doesn't have a multilingual version, but they promise that one is coming very shortly and that it's under development as we speak. Next, do you require the best security possible? Are you a security freak? If you are, there's only two good choices for you, Armory and Bitcoin Core. And finally, do you want a wallet that will facilitate multi-tier management? What I'm talking about here is the management strategy that we advocate to you, which is dividing your holdings into different pools, a short-term, medium pool, a medium-term, and long-term pool. If you do want multi-tier management for handling your Bitcoin holdings, then your options are blockchain info, green address, and Hive. Now, if we look at this list of possible choices, we've narrowed down that list of 14 to a list of seven potential winners. So this means we have a possible shortlist now that looks like this. This is a little more manageable. Our possible shortlist includes Armory, Bitcoin Core, Blockchain.info, CoinKite, Green Address, Hive, and Multibit. Now, I know this leaves off a couple of popular names, Coinbase and Mycelium in particular. We'll get to those a little later on. Right now, we're going to look at this set of seven because, frankly, this is a really solid set of seven and is going to address most people's needs. Again, I'm going to move on. You can come back to this chart or you can pause it if you want. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at each of these seven in a little more detail. So here we go. Let's look at Armory. Armory can be found at BitcoinArmory.com. Down here on the bottom left, we have a screenshot of the Armory wallet in action. This is one of the most feature-rich and secure wallet systems that are available today. Uh, it offers three different user modes. Uh, they all have good interfaces, and uh, there's a simple mode, there's an advanced mode, and then there's a developer mode. So really, for most people, there's, there's two modes, simple and advanced. 
It also includes a graphical keyboard to help protect against key loggers, uh, which is a very nice touch. Again, it's extremely security conscious. Uh, it's a very well done piece of work. It also offers extensive cold storage options, including fragmented cold storage. Uh, it does support deterministic wallets. Now, deterministic wallets mean that a different number, a different key is issued each time a transaction occurs, uh, and it keeps somebody from, uh, if they actually do get their hands on one of the keys, from cracking other transactions using the same key. Again, extremely good security. It is desktop only, and it runs on top of the Bitcoin Core. We'll talk about Bitcoin Core in just a sec. What this means is this is a heavy wallet. And, of course, it's desktop only. It's going to take up a large amount of space on your machine, but it's a great tool. It's a solid tool. If you're one of the security freaks that wants to have a machine that's dedicated to handling your Bitcoin holdings, Armory is the system for you. Next, the Bitcoin Core. Now, this was the original Bitcoin wallet developed by Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, it's continually updated by the core Bitcoin development team. It's extremely simplistic. Uh, it lacks a number of advanced features that are found in the other wallets. But since it's the most scrutinized wallet in use, it's also probably the most trustworthy choice. And um, though it has a very minimal feature set now, since it's constantly under development, it is going to improve. Um, it is desktop only, and again, it is a heavy wallet. Now realize what Armory do has done is they've taken the Bitcoin Core and they've put a nicer, more feature-rich interface on top of the Bitcoin Core. So frankly, if I was tempted by Bitcoin Core, I would probably install Armory instead because I'm going to get the benefits of Bitcoin Core plus a much nicer interface and much better usability. Next, blockchain.info. This is also a really solid choice. And technically, it's the name is my wallet. Everyone calls it blockchain.info. Uh, just because my wallet doesn't really uh, describe you know, what it is or distinguish it from other wallets very well. Uh, this is a nice secure wallet as well. It's not as secure as Armory and uh, the Bitcoin Core, but it does offer two-factor authentication. There are no fees for this wallet. Um, it does provide SMS and email payment notifications, which is really nice. Um, there are very easy backups built into this. It has a nice, simple, easy-to-use interface uh, that's shown in the screenshot on the page here. And it does facilitate the multi-tier management strategy. It has a lot of things going for it. I know a number of people that use blockchain.info and really like it. Uh, it's sort of the nice middle ground compromise. Uh, you know, you don't want to be locked into a heavy wallet and everything that goes with a heavy wallet. You want the, uh, the option of having uh, a uh, mobile device interface, etc. Blockchain.info is a very good choice in that regard. Next, CoinKite. CoinKite is a, is a slick commercial product. Uh, it's web-based, but it has a debit card option. So it does give you a, a way to spend your Bitcoin when you're outside the house, but using the debit coin card. Um, it doesn't give you full transaction capabilities. You can't, uh, you know, buy Bitcoin, add Bitcoin, etc., but you can spend it. Uh, it also supports Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Darkcoin. It's one of our multi-currency wallets. It's developer-friendly. It has an API option, so hopefully this means that other people are going to be building on the CoinKite system, and it's going to expand in the future. They offer a point-of-sale solution, which makes them extremely attractive to some people, because here we have now a solution that a merchant can implement, and they also wind up with uh, something that gives them a debit card then for spending those coins. They have very good interfaces. Like I say, it's a very slick product. You see a small screenshot of it there at the bottom right. Uh, it is, however, the most expensive solution listed here. Uh, there are monthly fees, particularly for using the debit card. Another option is Green Address. Uh, Green Address is a relative newcomer here, uh, but the security is quite good on this. They do provide deterministic wallets. Uh, they do offer two-factor authentication. They do facilitate multi-tier management, and they are providing a multilingual interface very soon. And they also provide easy transfers among other green address users. So if you're on green address, I'm on green address, we can actually transact on Twitter, we can transact on Facebook. I believe you can also transact by SMS. It, it's quite an interesting new product. Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time with it yet, but I will tell you I am downloading it and trying it. Hive, uh, this is actually the system that I use. Uh, it supports Bitcoin and Litecoin, uh, which does give it an advantage over many of the other systems. It does facilitate multi-tier management, which is another good reason to have it. It's extremely easy to use. Uh, it's also extremely easy to transact with other Hive users. 
just from a sheer simplicity point of view, Hive is a real winner. Um, it is reasonably secure, and it has a lot of the features that uh, you're looking for. It just makes it very, very easy to transact with Bitcoin, uh, both with merchants and with other users. Multibit. Multibit's on this list primarily because of its multilingual capabilities. It's very lightweight. It's very fast. It's translated into more than 35 languages. Uh, you can run multiple wallets, which does give you a, give you a way to handle your multi-tier strategy. Uh, it also connects directly to the Bitcoin network, and it downloads a small portion of the blockchain, not the entire thing. So it actually is a light wallet. The problem here, as you can see from the interface, is uh, it's pretty minimalistic. It, it looks really old school in that sense, and that's because it is quite lightweight and it is very fast. Uh, if you are somebody who's comfortable with you know, Linux-type interfaces and uh, you don't want a lot of bells and whistles, uh, or you want to, you know, an obscure language that isn't provided by other systems, Multibit's a good choice. Now the honorable mentions here, and there's some big names on this. The first is Coinbase. Now this is a very popular and user-friendly web wallet. Uh, it does integrate with bank accounts, and it does have a mobile wallet that is uh, used for spending, but the problem with Coinbase is it's USA only, and it is Bitcoin only. So uh, it didn't make our list of, uh, you know, qualifiers. Mycelium, also extremely popular. This is a mobile wallet. Uh, you can download it from your favorite uh, mobile app store. The unique thing about Mycelium is it supports trading. So you actually have now a mobile wallet where you can trade Bitcoin. Again, it didn't have a lot of the other features that were on our qualifiers, so it didn't make our short list. And finally is Zappo. Zappo's a newcomer, but they have a very good looking web wallet. They also provide a debit card for spending. The reason that I put Zappo on the honorable mentions list, they seem to have extremely good security and they offer fully insured cold storage. So there you have it. There's uh, a complete list of 14 wallets, a short list of seven, uh, and a set of three honorable mentions. So there's 10 options. We're bound to have covered something in there that'll work for you. I encourage you to get out and try them. Most of them, um, you can even try some of them out for free. You can certainly download all of them at no additional cost, though you may have to register on the site, etc. Blockchain.info does provide a demo site, so you can actually kick the tires on that one, try it out, take it for a test drive without having to do anything or give up any information at all. But I definitely encourage you to try different systems, see what's a good fit for your need. Um, you know, some of them are more feature rich than others, some of them are more user friendly than others. You need to find something you're comfortable with because you want it to be something you use. And that's the end of this lesson. Coming up next is our final lesson in this course, and it's our digital currency primer. Please join us for that.